I'm Frank Nicotero. Now, you know, my work doesn't start here in this fancy pants Hollywood studio. Oh no, I take planes, trains, and hydrofoils all over the country searching for total strangers to answer my questions. Now, only when I have an armload of answers do I get to come back to the studio and present them to two contestants who must determine who might have had heart but still needs a brain. And here are our contestants. We got Matt right there. What's up, Matt? And the lovely Danielle. Looking pretty. Remember guys, there's only one winner, no consolation prize in this show, so I suggest you try to win. Now, let's meet the three roadside rebels. First, Uli showed me why James Brown has nothing to fear just yet. So how do I pronounce your name, Uli? Uli, U-L-I-E. Uli like Julie, but drop the J. Get it right now. U, give it to the L, I, to the E, to the U-L-I-E. And Uli, you just had a, you have a child. Yes, I do. I have a nine-month daughter. What's her name? Mai Tai Marie Stewart. And Mai Tai is named after her? Princess White. Princess White. Right. She's not named after that alcoholic drink, so y'all get it right. She's awesome. And Brendan, Brendan and I realize we have something in common. So Brendan, where are you from and what do you do? Well, I'm from New York City. I'm a surgical... New York! In the house? You said you like to read. Like, what are you reading right now? Right now, I'm reading like Star Trek um, Insurrection. It's a book that. Uh, You're a Trekkie? Yeah, I'm a Trek fan. Nerd! <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I'm right there with you. Okay. <laughs> What's the nicest thing you've ever done for a stranger? Pushed them out of water. What do you mean, pushed them out of the water? Uh, it was a flood that was here a couple years ago, and I helped push them out of the so water. You kind of saved that person's life. Yeah. Christia revealed her crime-fighting fantasy. So I'm here in the Adventura Mall in Miami, Florida. I'm with Christia, which is a very, very pretty name. I've never heard it before. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. And what's the origin of the name? It's from Christian and Christina. Yeah. My parents, <laughs> they're very hippie kind of kids. Cool. You know? Yeah. Hippie, hippie people, you know. <laughs> so what do you do here in Miami? What I do, I go to school. What do you go to school for? I'm a criminology major. So you want to be a police officer or FBI? Oh, or... FBI. Like Clarice? Going after you. Yeah, like Clarice. Who are you going after? Who are you talking to? Uh, they know who they are. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking to you. <laughs> All right, we have a great bunch here, guys. Have fun. Hey, it's time to separate the clear-headed from the confused in our first round. Who knew it? That's right. I asked all three the same question. You have to figure out who got it right. Lock in your choice, and a correct answer earns you 100 bucks. Here we go, guys. The first question I asked to Uli, Brendan, and Christia. These three are great. In what sport do you have to avoid sand traps? In what sport do you have to avoid sand traps? Who knew it, guys? One of them knew it. Only one of them. Uli, Brendan, or Christia. I'll give you 100 bucks if you tell me right. All right, and you're both locked in, and you both think Brendan. Matt, you think he's the one we'll know, huh? Yeah, he's a guy. He's doing the golf right. thing. Okay, yeah. Danielle, you agree with this? He, he, yeah, he's a guy in sports, maybe. Okay, well, let's see if we get you both 100 bucks and start off the show good. In what sport do you have to avoid sand traps? Hunting. Hunting? Yes. How, would you, how do you avoid a sand trap when you're hunting? You don't want to get trapped by sand. There could be a tiger in those woods. That's exactly right. <laughs> That's a wrong answer. I'm sorry, guys. Tiger in the woods, tag golf. Okay, so one of these uh, ladies knew it. Do you guys think it was Uli or Christia? Uli. Well, uh, it was Christia. Christia. In what sport do you have to avoid sand traps? A uh, golf. Yeah. Is that right there? Golf thing. You got, well, let me see. Let me see a real golf swing. Looks like a putt well, putt swing. No, you got to do the four thing. Okay, go ahead. Go for it. Go. Four. <laughs> you just hit me right in the groin. That would have been painful. <laughs> that would get us on America's Funniest Videos. Okay, guys, here's the next question, you guys. Uh, we'll see if we can get some money on this one. A baseball infield is commonly described as what gem? A baseball infield. So who do you think knew it, guys? Was it Uli, Brendan, or Christia? I can give you the, uh, the correct answer on that one. Okay, you guys, we're both locked in the exact same time again with the same person. Uh, this time you guys think it's Christia. Danielle, you think she'll know this? Christia, sorry. Well, if she knew something about golf, I'm betting she has to know something about baseball. Okay, and Matt, you agree with this? That's what I was thinking, and plus she's uh, such a jewel. Okay, <laughs> she's such a, it's Christia. Let's see if she got it right. A baseball infield is commonly described as what gem? 
a diamond. There you go. Yeah. Very good. You each get a hundred bucks. Yeah. Christy, I know. Nice job. She is a jewel match. Just for fun, let's see what Brandon said on this one. A baseball infield is commonly described as what gem? Rhinestone. A rhinestone? Yeah, a rhinestone gem. You play baseball? No, you play like basketball, football. Yeah, I don't really too much play baseball. You know, they say like, you know, the baseball diamond. Yeah, so I'm thinking a gem, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Brandon. The trackie. Okay, guys, here's the last question in the round. If you're tired from talking, you could say you talked until you were blue in the what? So who knew it? So only one of them knew it. What do you think? Okay, you guys are both locked in. You think Uli knows, huh, man? I do. She looks like a funny girl. Okay, yeah. she is a very yeah. funny girl. Yeah. Well, let's see if she knows the answer. If you're tired from talking, you could say you talked until you were blue in the what? Face. Blue in the face, right. You ever get that way? I have a feeling you do because you talk a lot. Yeah, I'm talking blue now. You talking to me today? Yeah. Well, I'm, you're not talking to me. Oh, no, I'm talking myself to death. She got it right. Let it go, Matt. Yeah. You're up to 200 bucks. Nice job, Danielle. You went with Christia. I don't think she knew it, but let's see what she said. If you're tired of talking, you could say you talked until you were blue in the what? Blue in the mouth. Blue in the mouth. Your mouth gets blue when you've your lips have been moving so much they bruise. I don't know who made up that because that's not true. You I talk a lot and my mouth has never turned blue. Sorry, she didn't know the answer on that one, Danielle. Let's recap the scores. You got 100 bucks, Danielle. Not bad for the first time. Matt's got 200 bucks, though. Nice job, buddy. Dollar values double and so do the laughs. Oh, yes, when Street Smart returns. So don't fall away. These are three funny people. Street Smart, let's meet our two in-studio contestants. Now we have Matt from Dayton, Ohio. He's a creative coordinator. And uh, tell me this time you went, you went hiking and what happened? Oh, well, I was always really, really short as a kid. Okay. And so I was hiking through the snow and I fell through this, like, giant hole that was six feet deep. Right. And no one could hear me. My parents, like, I was screaming and they had to come and find me and pull me out and I was head to toe covered in mud. Oh, oh really? So you got to look at the signs when they say when, when hiking you have to be at least this tall. Like, That's right. right. Yeah. That's right. And you know, you were short as a kid because now you're huge. Matt. Oh. Uh, look, I'm, I'm not, look, come on. I'm, well, same thing. All right. Yeah. But I'm on a ride. All right, now we have Danielle here from Plantation, Florida, an agency director. Now, you were a cheerleader, and what happened one time when you were cheering? Uh, we have really quick costume changes at right. halftime. And Tell me, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't until after we performed our halftime routine that I noticed I put my top on backwards. Oh. It was your salute to Chris Cross, right? Exactly. Daddy Mac will make the jump. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for being here. Let's recap the scores. Danielle's got 100 bucks. Matt's got 200 bucks. Yeah. Whip out your wooly socks, because it's going to get chilly when we find out who blew it. Now, it's the same question only two at a time. You guys have to figure out who got it wrong. We're looking for wrong answers. Lock in your choice, and a correct guess turns you $200 in round two. Plus, there's a dunce cap that we just flew in there. I can only use once this round. When you think your opponent doesn't know an answer, buzz in and dunce them. If they're wrong, you get 200 bucks. If they're right, they get the 200 bucks. Oh, yeah. The cap can turn on you like a vicious dog, so watch out. All right, here's the first question I asked to both Uli and Brendan. What blonde storybook character thought the baby bear's bed was just right? So, oh, you've been done, Danielle. Matt, throw that cap up on her. Danielle, I'm going to read the question again. You'll have five seconds to answer the question. What blonde storybook character thought the baby bear's bed was just right? Goldilocks. That's the right answer, Danielle. Way to go. Throw that cap on Matt. Way to go. Oh, damn. Nice job. You stole the 200 bucks from him. You take the lead. Now, guys, who do you think blew this one? Do you think it was Uli or Brendan? Did not know the answer to that one. Matt, what do you think? If she has blonde hair, she probably grew up with it. Ah. I don't. Okay, all right, you're both locked in. You think Brendan blew it, huh, Danielle? Mm -hmm. He doesn't know this one? Well, Uli's a mother, so she's got to be in the with the fairy tales. Okay. I'm hoping. Let's see if that strategy works. What blonde storybook character thought the baby bear's bed was just right? Goldilocks. It was Goldilocks. Goldilocks and the three bears. Remember she busted into their into their crib? Yeah, I remember she busted into She's like, this porridge is whack. And then she got into the one bed and she was fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down. That's the right answer, Danielle. I'm sorry, Matt. You were right. Woo! Uli blew it. Let's check yeah. it out. What blonde storybook character thought the baby bear's bed was just right? Damn, what was that? Um, three little bears. All right. So who was the blonde? Cindy Lauper. Cindy Lauper, right? Yeah. She just, you know, she thought the bed was just right. She just wants to have fun. <laughs> yeah. Woo! Keep yeah. going, Matt. Show the box up before yeah. I even take the lead. All right. Here's the next question I asked to Brendan and Christia. Christia, yeah. Finish this phrase, sign sealed and what? 
Signed, sealed, and what? So who blew it? Looking for the wrong answer. Was it Brandon or Christia? All right, and you're both locked in. You guys split decision on this one. You think Christia blew it, huh, Matt? I do. I don't think Matt? she's delivered anything. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's take a look. Finish this phrase. Signed, sealed, and what? Sold. Signed, sealed, and sold. Yes. Where does this come into play? Oh, when you're trying to get rid of a boyfriend. Right. Hand him over to the next girl. Signed, sealed, and sold. Woo! She blew it. Way to go, yeah. man. She takes up the 600. Danielle, Brennan got this one right. Here it is. Finish this phrase. Signed, sealed, and what? Like the U.S. Postal Service is delivered. Signed, sealed, delivered. I'm yours. Sorry, Danielle. Can't give you any money on that one. But we got one more for you, uh, for you both here. This is a question I asked to Uli and Christia. What is nicknamed Stars and Stripes? What is nicknamed Stars and Stripes? One of them blew it. Tell me who it was. I'll give you 200 bucks. Was it Uli or Christia? All uh, right, good game here. Back and forth. The dunce cap was in play. We always like that. Both locked in. You both think Uli blew it. Matt, you won't know this one? I don't think so. Okay. No, I, I, I was thinking Christia might know it because she's wanting to be in the FBI. Right. So. Oh, okay, right. yeah. let's see if it works for both of you and see if she blew it. What is nicknamed Stars and Stripes? The Star Spangled Banner. So the song is nicknamed the... the, the yeah, the song. Could you sing a little of Stars and Stripes? Oh, say can you see? I'm do it like Whitney Houston. Yeah. By the dawn's early light. We're so proud. I cannot sing here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, she blew that one. Each get 200 bucks. Nice job. Uh, Christine had the correct answer. Stars and Stripes, the American flag. Yes. All right, let's recap the scores here. Danielle's got 500 bucks. Nice job. Woo! Matt, up to $800. Nice job. All right, it would be un-American to change the channel right now, so stay tuned. It's your civic duty. I want you to stay tuned. <laughs> Shimmy? That was nice. <laughs> hey, welcome back. I hate to corral you, but it is time to pick your party. Each of us choose a person in the entire round and try to guess how to answer three questions. Craig predicts it's worth $300. The dunce cap is back. It's worth $300. You can only use it once. Now, recap of the scores. Danielle's got $500. bucks. has got $800. Woo! Player trailing goes first. Danielle, that's you. So who would you like to giddy up on? I am going to take You're going to go with Brendan. Brendan. All right, good choice. Woo! Matt, how about you? You're going to go I'm with Uli. Nice Louis. choice. All right. So, uh, Danielle, here's your first question to Brendan. And if you predict this correctly, we'll have a tie game. If you're talking about a prop plane, what is prop short for? So do you think he got it right or wrong, Danielle? 300 bucks on the line. Wrong. All right, if he blew it, we got a tie game. Let's check it out. If you're talking about a prop plane, what is prop short for? Basically, prop is short for preparation. Preparation plane. And when you say preparation, you mean getting it ready, stuff like that. Right, you gotta, they got to they gotta, you know, fuel it up, get the luggage on. Yeah, all that other Get crap. the propeller going. Yeah, that crap. <laughs> Now we got a tie game. The correct answer, propeller. Prop plane, propeller. Yes. All right. Here's your first question, Matt, to Uli. Finish this cliche for ejecting someone. Don't let the blank hit you on the way out. So what do you think, Matt? You think she got it right or wrong? She's kind of sassy. I'm thinking right. right. She's yeah. sassy. All right. Let's see if we can get you uh, 300 bucks. Uli, finish this cliche for ejecting someone. Okay. Don't let the blank hit you on the way out. Don't let the door hit you. No, hit your ass on the way out. <laughs> What do you say to someone when you want them out of your place? Do you really want to know? Get out. Get the step in. Get the out. Get the out. Get the out now. <laughs> oh, she got it right about way to go. I'm going to her much. She's one of the funniest people ever. All right, Danielle, here's your next question to Brendan. In slang, if you grease someone's palm, what are you doing? So do you think, oh, you've been done, Danielle. He got you off guard. Matt, throw that cap up there. All right, Danielle, I'm going to read the question again. You'll have five seconds to answer this. If you get it right, we got a tie game. In slang, if you grease someone's palm, what are you doing? You are making them nervous. It's a wrong answer, Danielle. Matt gets the 300 bucks. Leave that cap on. Wait a minute. Now, Danielle, you can get that 300 bucks back if you tell me if Brennan got it right or wrong. What do you think? Well, I got it wrong. I'm going to hope he got it wrong. Okay, too. lock in there. All right, let's take a look. In slang, if you grease someone's palm, what are you doing? Slapping skins, giving a high five. You got to grease my palm. You <laughs> 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 got that wrong. Way to go, Danielle. Take 
Grease up to eleven hundred dollars. If you're uh, greasing someone's palm, you're bribing them. Bribing them, you know. You bribe them and then you, you book out of there. All right. Here's the next question. Matt, I asked Uli, what style of music finishes this song title? <laughs> I was blank when blank wasn't cool. I'm thinking she's not going to get that. <laughs> she got it wrong. Wrong. All right, let's take a look. What style of music finishes this song? I was blank when blank wasn't cool. R&B. What about country music? Country B. Country music started R&B. So you like country? Yeah, I love country. I clock. What? Dang it. Oh. The correct answer, I was country, when country wasn't cool. All right, Danielle, here's your last question to Brandon. The movie On the Line stars Joey and Lance from what boy band? What do you think? Think Brandon got it right or wrong? There's no way he knows this. Uh, oh, you think wrong? All right, let's take a look. The movie On the Line stars Joey and Lance from what boy band? In sync. Very good. You're acting like you're all surprised you knew that. You have the poster. No, I don't. Okay, I do. <laughs> he got it right, Danielle. He pulled out in sync. He did get that right. Now, Matt, you can increase your lead for the wager of death. Uh, you'll be up to two grand if you get this right. That's a pretty damn high score. What kind of animal is on Nesquik containers? What kind Ooh. of animal is on Nesquik containers? Do you think she got it right or wrong, Matt? Yeah, a lot of sugar in that, and yeah, I think she'll know. <laughs> yeah, right. All right. Let's take a look. <laughs> what kind of animal is on Nesquik containers? That, with that darn rabbit. It is the rabbit, yeah. Silly rabbit. Well, that's the, no, that's, oh, that's a serious. That no, I think it's, it's a different. It's a rabbit, though, yeah. I think they're cousins. That's the correct answer. Way to go, Matt. Nice shot. Great box. Let's recap the scores. Danielle, $1,100, but Matt with a really high score, $2,000. As far as high as you can get. Now, when we return, Matt and Danielle will be making a final prediction on a question I asked to Uli, Brendan, and Christia. I asked them, finish the title of this book by Jules Verne, 20,000 Leagues Under the What? Somebody call the morgue. It's almost time for the wager of death. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back. Matt and Danielle, here's the deal. Now, during the break, you both secretly chose a person, predicted if they would be right or wrong, and then you made a wager not to exceed your current total. Danielle's got 1100 bucks. Matt with an ultra high total of $2,000. All right, here's the question I asked to Uli, Brendan, and Christia. Finish the title of this book by Jules Verne. 20,000 Leagues Under the What? So let's get your choices, Matt. Got the lead, 2,000 bucks, trying to make uh, some big money here today. So whose clip do you want to see? Go with Brandon. Yeah. All right, Danielle, how about you? Also going with Brandon. That means no one picked Uli or Christia. We'll say bye to those lovely ladies, two great ones, very funny. That means one clip left in the show, guys. It's Brandon's. Let's see what he says. Finish the title of this book by Jules Verne. 20,000 Leagues Under the... C. That is the correct answer. The Jules Verne book is 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Now, Danielle, you went with Brendan. We saw him get it right. What did you say he would do? You said he would get it right. Oh, now, Danielle, how much did you wager of your $1,100? You wagered, show me how much for that button. You went big. She went all or nothing. Takes you to $2,200. She now has the lead. Matt, you also went with Brendan. We saw him say C. That was a correct answer. What did you say he would do? You also said right. Now, Matt, you had $2,000. If you wagered more than $200, you're our champ. How much did you wager, Matt? Let's see. $800, bucks. Oh. little conservative takes him to $2,800. Matt is our champ for the day. Congratulations, Matt. Thanks for playing along, Danielle. What did we learn today? Wow, the, the storybook character is Goldilocks and the Three Bears, not Cindy Lauper. She bought back here tomorrow. We'll see you. Bye. Finish the title of this book by Jules Verne, 20,000 Leagues Under the What? Bridge. The Bridge. Complete the title of this book by Jules Verne. 20,000 Leagues Under the What? Under the Sea. Do -do -do -do. 